Hello all, welcome to the B-Sides DFW 2021 virtual conference. This is the track two presentation of Hashcat and survivorship bias, cracking uncommon passwords. Now for some ID. My name is John Rhodes and I currently work for Truist Bank as a principal adversarial engineer. I also moonlight as a bug bounty hunter uh, with Synac as a Synac Red Team member. So what is survivorship bias? I'm not gonna read the definition word for word, it's there on the slide. Basically, though it's focusing solely on specific results or preconceptions and ignoring the rest because it's not visible to you. Let's take a look at a very common example of survivorship bias. During World War II, the US and British Air Forces were losing a large number of bombers. In an attempt to increase the survival rate of these bombers, they'd study the damage of the returning planes to see what areas needed to be reinforced. A composite image was created showing all the damage, like the one you see on the slide, and a decision was made to add additional armor to the most hit areas of the bomber. This seems like a logical conclusion, right? If the plane was getting shot on the wings and mid-fuselage and tail, then those areas should be the which you should reinforce. Well, maybe not quite. The British Air Force decided to reach out to a statistician named Abraham Wald. He worked with the Statistical Research Group at Columbia University. Using survivorship bias in his calculations, Wald deduced that the armor should be added in the areas with the least amount of damage, like the engines, the cockpit, and the gunner seat. The planes that were studied by the military had all survived without hits to these areas, whereas the planes that did not make it back were likely hit here. So if you can imagine, if the cockpit gets shot up, the plane's probably going down. If you lose your gunner, you're not gonna have protection. If you don't have engines, it's pretty hard to fly. Now into Hashcat. I'm gonna start with an introduction to Hashcat and how to use it with a few test cases and then work a real world example. So what is Hashcat? Hashcat is an awesome password recovery tool. It works on all major OSs and has support for 300 plus hashing algorithms. It also supports CPU, GPU, and other hardware accelerators that can greatly speed up hacking, which is great if you can find a GPU these days, you know, at a non-scoffing price. So what do you need to do to get started cracking? Well, first you gotta have the thing that you're trying to crack, which is gonna be a password hash or a list of hashes but you're also gonna to need to know that hash is type. Hash ID or hashes.com and other tools can help you determine the hash type if you don't know it. Next, you're gonna to need to know the attack mode you wanna use. You're likely gonna use a combination of modes when you're cracking passwords. Hashcat has five modes built in, straight, combination, brute force, and hybrid. Hybrid's got two categories. It's got wordless plus a mask, and mass plus a word list. Finally, you're also gonna need a word list or two or more, depending on the attack mode you're running. So where can you get your word list? Well, lots of places. Uh, here's a very much non-exhaustive list of word lists that you can use to get started, or you can create your own. It's good to have a variety of word lists as they all have pluses and minuses, which we'll discuss later. All right, so next is a note about some Hashcat attack types. You'll most likely crack some passwords with word lists, but a large majority of the passwords will not be able to crack this way. For those hashes, a brute force attack or hybrid attack, which combines a word list and brute force, will likely be needed. The old brute force method in Hashcat has been deprecated and replaced by the mask attack. The mask attack allows you to set a very specific character sets for each position of a potential password. You know, an example of this would be if you had an eight character password, the mask could be set as the first character is uppercase, the next five characters all being lowercase, followed by a single digit, and then followed by a special character, which meets most requirements for a lot of password policies out there. And here's a quick look at the built-in character sets that we have in Hashcat. Uh, today, we're gonna be using uppercase, lowercase, 
decimal and all. All is a combination of lowercase, uppercase, decimal, and special characters. In addition to the built-in character sets, Hashcat also allows you to create custom character sets. This allows you to set only the characters you wanted to include in the character set. So one example of this is to use a combination of the built-in character sets, like special characters and decimals. You can use a, or set a custom character set by using the switch one for the first custom character set. As you see in the example, we have um, the switch one, uh, question mark S, question mark D, and that's gonna contain all special characters and decimals for that custom character set. To create additional character sets, you're going to increment the number. Um, so minus or switch two, switch three, and so on. But you can only use up to four custom character sets at a time. So how can you obtain uh, Intel on password hashes? Uh, that's what we're going to use on this example. Well, in Missouri, I heard you can just code them from HTML and state government websites. But most of the time, you have to obtain them from other tried and true methods, some of which are listed above. Again, this list is by no means exhaustive, but it has some very good options. Or, you know, you can just create your own hashes. Uh, the NTLM hashing algorithm is widely known, and many websites have NTLM hash generation tools. I've got an example here, uh, top2.com. It allows you to generate passwords by length. And you can even specify the character sets you'd like to use for the generated passwords. Once the passwords are generated, you can calculate the NTLM hashes and the LM hashes. It also gives you the nice uh, password dump format there. Uh, for our exercises today, we're only going to be using the NTLM hashes. All right, so now we have everything we need to start cracking. So let's look at a few examples of different Hashcat modes with some test passwords. First up is going to be a brute force mask attack. A file named text.txt contains the test hash of the password, password, all lowercase. The hash type, switch M, is set to 1000. This is for NTLM hashes. The attack mode is set to 3 for brute force. And the mask is set to 8 lowercase characters. Uh, this password was cracked in just two seconds. Uh, yes, that was a very easy one. So let's try a longer and more complex password. Uh, the next password is password with a capital P, one, two, three, exclamation point. This is a 12 character password. It has an uppercase letter. It has seven lowercase letters. It's got three numbers and one special character. So let's try another brute force mask attack. I've updated text.txt with the new password hash. The hash type is going to be 1,000 still for MTLM hashes. The attack mode is going to be set to 3 for brute force. But I'm going to update the mask uh, for 12 characters. So first, I've got an uppercase letter. Next, 7 are going to be lowercase, followed by 4 all characters. And you can see the mask set there on the slide. So when we run this one, Hashcat's going to throw an error. It says integer overflow detected in key space. Well, what does this mean? So I'll, I'll let uh, Royce Williams, who's a contributor of Hashcat, explain uh, when someone asks this question in an issue on their GitHub page. First off, he says the mask is A, too large for Hashcat to handle, and secondly, B, even if it could, it would take 1,000 years to complete. You will need to know more about your target plaintext in order to attack it. Okay, well, let's try another attack type. So now we'll try a hybrid attack for the 12 character password. The attack mode on this one's going to have to be changed to six. Uh, if you remember, this is word list and a mask. The word list we're going to use is rockyou.txt. This is included in Kali. And the mask is going to be set to four characters, um, same as before, for all characters. Now, this time you run it, we don't get an error, but the estimated time to crack is 21 hours. Now, 
just to note in this estimated time to crack. This is to get through all combinations of every word in the word list and all combinations of all the letters, all the characters with every word in the word list. So if you crack a single password, it could be cracked in the first 10 minutes of this 21 hours, or it might be cracked in the last minute of the 21 hours. I, I'd rather not wait and see on this one. Let's see if we can find a quicker method to crack this. So we're gonna keep most of the settings the same this time, and we're just gonna update the word list. So instead of using the larger rocku.txt words list, which by the way, contains 14 million words, we're gonna use english.txt, which contains a little over 3 million words. english.txt is just an English dictionary, got a lot of words in it. So the estimated time to crack for this example dropped from 21 hours to just five hours, which is quite a bit better. But let's not wait for this one to finish. Let's see if we can find a more target attack, more specific attack. So we're gonna keep everything the same as the last example, even the word list, but we're gonna be a little more specific with the math this time. Instead of having the four characters set to all characters, let's create a custom character set. The custom character set number one, specified by the switch one, is set to decimal and special characters only, as evidenced by the custom character set on the slide. We have switch one, question mark D, question mark S for decimal and special characters. So we run the attack and the estimated time to crack has now been reduced from five hours to just 13 minutes. And the actual password cracked in just 7.5 minutes. That's, that's excellent. All right, so let's try this one one more time to see if we can't get it cracked even faster. Again, let's leave everything else the same, except even be a little bit more specific with the mask. Instead of using the custom character set, the mask this time is going to be set to the first three characters as decimals, and the last character is set as a special character. As you can see, we have question mark D, question mark D, question mark D. There's the three decibels and question mark S for the special character. This time the password cracked in just five seconds. And it kind of sounds like Royce Williams had the right idea. The more specific you can be, the quicker you can crack the password. Let's move on to the next example. All right, for this example, we have a complex password that is eight characters. This password uses uppercase, a lowercase, number, and special characters, but the number and special character are not at the end, so we can't use a specific mask at each position this time. So let's try a mask attack with eight characters set to all character types. The attack mode is changed back to three for brute force. The hash has been updated in the text.txt file, and the attack is kicked off. Wow, the estimated time to crack this one is 1.5 days at the start of this attempt, and it's gonna fluctuate as the attempt goes on. Uh, I think we should look at another way to do this is we really don't wanna wait that long. So up to this point, we haven't tried a straight or a wordless attack yet. So let's change the attack mode back to zero for straight, and we're gonna use the rock you word list. This time, the the complex password of capital P at sign S S W zero R D was cracked in just two seconds. Okay, so now we've seen a couple of test cases and we've learned some things. So let's gather some initial thoughts here. First, these larger word lists can be very useful but they dramatically increase the cracking time due to number combinations with the hybrid attacks especially. It might be more useful to use a targeted and or smaller word list depending on what you know about the environment. Again, the more you know, the easier it is going to be for you to crack the passwords. 
Second, hybrid attacks are great at cracking hashes from longer passwords. That hash guide is not going to be able to brute force. And thirdly, what is better, password length or complexity? A password containing a long collection of simple words, but non-related words, can be very hard if impossible to crack. Whereas an eight-character but complex password can crack in a matter of hours or days, depending on the hardware. All right, so now for a real-ish world example. I pulled some cracked hashes from my Hashcat pot file, but some of them were had to be edited to protect the guilty. You know, company names, profanity, etc. Additionally, I generated some hash, uh, hashes with the NTLM generator on Tom2.com. Uh, this was to help round out the list. So I've ended up with 808 password hashes, and I added them all to a file named example.hashes that will be used through the next round of exercises. So what is a pot file? A uh, Hashcat's pot file is where Hashcat stores broken hashes. On Linux, it's stored in the location listed there on the slide. On Windows, it's stored in the same folder as hashcat.exe, wherever you extracted it on your system. If you want to view all hashes that you've cracked from a particular hash file, you use the switch show. An example of this would be hashcat, and earlier we used text.txt and the switch show. If you want to see all the hashes in the pot file, you can cat out the hashcat pot file, or if you're in Windows, you can type it out. Okay, so let's go back to the example. In order to more effectively crack passwords, it's good to know information about your target. We're gonna make some assumptions about our company's password policy here. Uh, we're gonna use a standard password policy in, as a fill in here for the fictitious company. The password policy is as follows. Passwords must be eight characters or longer. Passwords must contain three of the four following characteristics. They must have an uppercase, lowercase, number, special character, three of the four. And passwords cannot contain a username. Uh, pretty simple, pretty standard password policy. All right, so how does survivorship bias tie into crack passwords? Like the US military overlooked data on planes that did not return because this data wasn't directly visible to them, it's easy to overlook data when cracking passwords. If you focus strictly on cracking passwords based on the password policy, for example, or known standards or user behavior, you're likely gonna overlook a lot of very easy to crack passwords. So if you do have your known password policy, it's still worth checking for items that fall outside of that password policy, like passwords that are less than the required number of characters. An increment scan, of less than eight characters is usually very quick and it's beneficial to password cracking efforts. To run an increment scan, you just use the I switch. You can also set a minimum number to increment from with the increment dash min equals number switch. So an example of this would be if you had legacy service account passwords that were created before the password policy was put into place. Service account passwords are generally static in most organizations as well. So a pass or a legacy service account password that was set 20 years ago may still be valid today. As an example, I once found a four character password for a service account that had domain admin privileges. This password was able to be cracked in just a few seconds. I was then able to perform several other attacks as domain admin. Additionally, some passwords are gonna subvert common expectations or standards. They may start with lowercase instead of uppercase. They may start with a number or a special character, or they may use leet speak throughout the whole password. So speaking of leet speak, what is it? Well, leet speak is a style of typing that replaces English letters with similar looking numbers or symbols. It was closely tied to early hacking and gaming culture. With a script like LeetSpeak Generator, you can convert an existing word list to LeetSpeak. Uh, using a simple example word list here, I've had two passwords in it, 
capital P A S S W R D and P capital P A S S W R D one two three exclamation point. The Elite Suite generator will create multiple Elite Suite variations of each string, as you can see on the slide. The Elite Suite generator script can be downloaded and edited if needed from the pastebin link above. There are also other scripts and tools that can transform an existing word list to Elite Suite, so be sure to find the one that works best for your needs. All right, let's get cracking. Uh, we're going to start going after some low-hanging fruit with a mask created from the company's password policy and using a common password format. The attack mode is going to be set to brute force, A3. A custom character set is going to be created, which contains a special characters and decimals only. The mask we're using is going to start with one uppercase character, followed by four lowercase characters, and ends with the two characters from our custom character set. Uh, you can see that on the slide. And I'm going to run the attack. So this yielded 16 passwords out of the 808 in 30 seconds. OK, let's take a short detour to create a word list that has the uppercase first letter for each word in the list. This can be useful in cracking passwords since many passwords start with a capital letter. So I can perform this operation on an existing word list and output it to a new word list using the command listed on the slide. All right, so back to cracking. We're going to use our newly updated word list, brockq up. Uh, this time we're going to do a straight attack. Attack mode is going to be set to zero for that. And we're going to use a new word list. The total crack password is now up to 51 in just two seconds. All right, let's go ahead and try another straight attack. Attack mode still zero, and we're going to use an unmodified Rocky word list. A few additional passwords were cracked in two seconds, and the total passwords cracked is now 57. All right, so far, we've tried a mask attack with standard password format and two straight attacks using an original and a modified word list. With these, we've had minimal success cracking 57 passwords. Let's try something a little different this time and combine the two methods and do a hybrid attack, a wordless plus a mask. So we have to switch over to hybrid mode. So we're going to change the attack mode to six. Uh, this is for hybrid wordless plus mask. I've also taken a list of 3 million English words and capitalized the first letter using the said script. I create a new word list called English-up. Uh, created a custom character set with a key space that contains special characters and decimals only. And we're going to use four of those for this attack. And we're going to use the increment I switch to increment through the mask. Uh, we run the attack, and this time we've cracked a much larger number of passwords in a single 13-minute attack. Uh, so the total correct password is now up to 261, which is 33%. So the last attack was pretty efficient with a four-character mask. Let's retry the attack with a five-character mask uh, using the same custom character set and drop the increment switch. Now, due to the number of combinations added with just the single extra character, the estimated completion time is now nine plus hours. You know, typically, I'd let this one finish running an actual engagement, as several larger passwords are likely to be discovered this way. Uh, today's exercise, I just let it run for 40 minutes and cut it short. Now, if you take a look at some of the passwords that were cracked in this round, many of them are too long to be cracked for brute force attacks. Uh, some of them are even up to 14 plus characters. So the total crack we have now is 289 out of the 808. Uh, let's move on. All right, so now we're going to try another hybrid attack, attack mode 6. And we're going to use the unmodified English word list uh, without the capital letter first. Uh, custom character set is still set. That contains special characters and decimals. And we're going to use increment switch to increment through the mask. 
Uh, this time, a few additional passwords were cracked in 13 minutes. Uh, the total passwords cracked now is up to 304. All right, so this time we're going to try a brute force mask attack. And all eight characters are going to be set to all characters in the key space. We're also going to make sure we're going to use the capital O switch. And this will enable optimized kernels. Uh, this helps to be a little more efficient with cracking. Additionally, we're going to use the increment I switch to increment through the mask. Now, when we look at the estimated time to crack, it's going to be two plus days for this one. I allowed it to run for about 39 minutes, and only a few additional passwords are cracked. Now, if I let it run for the entire duration, many more, but not all the passwords would be cracked using this attack. Um, this is one I recommend you run later after you've tried everything else. It's going to take a while. Uh, you just kind of let it sit. Or if you've got another uh, box to run unknown, you can start off with this one, and you can try other techniques on the other one. All right, so since we're in a bit of a time crunch here, we don't have two plus days. Uh, let's see how changing the mask will change the estimated time to completion. So we'll create a custom character set that is created with a key space that contains special characters and decimals. Uh, the mask is going to be updated, includes six all characters first, and then two characters at the end with the custom character set, as you can see on the slide. This time, the estimated completion time is going to be 13 hours, and that's way better than two plus days. Uh, I'm only going to let it run for 15 minutes, though, and during that time, I got a few additional passwords. Uh, we're up to 314. So brute forcing, it can lead to great results, given enough time. But so far, we've had most luck with our hyper attacks. So let's try a different hybrid attack with a different word list. So we still got a custom character set with special characters and decibels. And this time we're going to be using Rocky word list. Uh, we've got a mass set with three characters with the custom character set. We're going to have the increment switch turned on. And this attack is going to yield more results in three minutes. And now we're up to 319. All right, since we had better luck with a capitalized word list, Let's run through the attack again with our custom rock Q, a dash upward list with the first letter of each word capitalized. The mask and all other settings are going to remain the same. And a few more passwords are cracked in this attempt. And now we're up to 40%. So far, we've used a Kali built in word list, uh, the rockq.txt, and we've used one containing English words. But there are a ton of other word lists out there to try. Uh, we're going to start first with weak pass 2a and we're going to need to change the attack mode back to straight and set the new word list this attack will run for about 29 minutes and it cracked several new passwords for a total of 359 of 808. next up we're going to try the kenoshi word list uh, this is also from the weak pass website we're going to set the new word list, but we're going to leave the rest of the settings the same. This attack ran for three minutes as the word list is much shorter, and it cracked several new passwords for a total of 366. Finally, we're going to try the hashes org 2019 word list. Again, we're going to set the new word list in the attack, and we're going to leave the rest of the settings the same. This attack is going to run for three minutes. It's also a shorter word list, and it cracks several new passwords for a total of 378 of 808. All right, so before going back to a longer attack like brute force all characters, let's take a look at what's been cracked so far. This can be done by using the show switch in Hashcat. If you want to see the passwords and not the hash password combinations, you can use the following command on this slide. Uh, basically, we're going to use a, so, a show switch on the hash file with hashcat. We're going to cut it at the delimiter for a colon, and then we're only going to show the second side. Uh, then we're going to sort it for unique.
because we only want unique passwords and we want them sorted. So this is going to provide you with a sorted list of passwords that we can use to find additional passwords. And our use case here, uh, several passwords discovered had the prefixes of company and new hire. So these would make great candidates for mask attacks as they seem to be common and incrementing passwords. Uh, just a note, you know, so many companies are going to use default temporary passwords for new hires. Uh, they might use one for password lock. You, you lock your password, you call into the service desk, and they unlock your password, and they unlock it with a password of unlock1 or temp123 or something else stupid. Um, now, many users are going to take those passwords that they got from when they first got hired or when their passwords got unlocked or just the passwords is given to them, and they're going to just increment it. Uh, that's why when you see one password like new hire one, it may be the first new hire password. That's what they give out when they start. And then you'll see it incrementing up. So in this example, we have new hire one, and then we have two, and we have 10, and 11, and 12, and so on and so forth. All right, so now we're going to start a mask attack for the new hire prefix. Uh, we're going to set the attack mode to three for brute force. A custom character set is created with a key space that has special characters and decimals only. Uh, this mask is going to be set to the prefix itself, and then four characters used in a custom character set. Finally, we're going to use the increment switch, and the increment switch is going to increment through that mask. So, wow, that's a lot of new hard passwords. <laughs> So we've jumped up from 378 passwords cracked previously to 448 cracked passwords in just seven seconds on this attempt. And we have now cracked over 50% of the passwords. All right, now we'll try the same thing, but with the company prefix. Uh, this mask will be set to prefix plus four characters using the customer character set. Everything else is going to stay the same, including increment. This time, though, we only got one additional password, but it only took four seconds. All right, so how can we do the same thing, but a little more efficiently? Well, you said, of course. Yeah, <laughs> said's a great tool. So we're going to use the command here listed on the slide. And what it's going to do is trim off the numbers from all the cracked passwords that we have and then create a new word list. We'll then use this new word list in a hybrid attack with a mask of four all characters to find the additional passwords that use the prefixes from all our previous cracked passwords. So a few more passwords were cracked this way, and we're now up at 452 of the 808. All right, so now it's time for status report. We've been able to crack over half. We're at 56% now of the passwords in two hours and about 45 minutes or so. Many of these passwords were well over eight characters and they would have not been able to be cracked by a brute force or a straight wordless attack. A large majority of the other ones could be cracked with more time, uh, probably about two days or with better hardware. Currently I'm only using a single NVIDIA 2080. Now, if you don't have hardware at home to be able to do this, you can use a AWS GPU instance. Now, they can be relatively cheap to run, especially if you use spot instances, but you need to be sure to stop the instance when it's not in use, and you can build automation to help with that. All right, so now I wanted to quickly run through some other things you could try. First up is going to be a hybrid attack with a list of English names, plus a four all character mask. Now, I would also recommend using word lists from other countries and nationalities as well, depending on your target. Uh, with this one, we're up to 456 of the 808. A second option would be to run a hybrid attack with elite speed word list and a mask. 
You can generate your own LeetSpeak word list using the LeetSpeak generator script provided earlier in the presentation. We can keep the mask from the previous example and change out the word list to a LeetSpeak one. I ran this through with LeetSpeak English, as you see, a Leet English text, and a LeetSpeak version of Rocku, Leet Rocku text. Uh, after Rocku, we had 465 of the 808 cracked. All right, so finally, it would be very beneficial to run a hybrid attack on some of the larger word lists you have. Um, this is likely going to take a while, but the results from the test case that I've used uh, have proved worth it. So you're going to set up a hybrid attack, uh, attack mode 6. You're going to use a custom character set, again, uh, decimal special characters, and choose a large word list like Kenoshi or Weakpath 2A. Uh, the mask we're going to use, we're going to have it set to up to four characters and make sure that increment is turned on and run the attack. So when I started this, I let it run for just 20 minutes. I used Kenoshi word list and I cracked up to 542 of the 808 passwords. All right, and that's all I have today. Uh, thanks for attending. I really hope you learned something. I'll be on the B-Sides DFW Discord if you have any questions. And my handle is John Doe 297 Thank you so much.